Let's start in a comfortable seated position. And that could be on the chair since we're using chairs today. Like if that's more comfortable, that is absolutely okay. Mm -hmm. Just put your chair onto the mat. Okay. Okay. And then just for the next few breaths, I want you to close your eyes, breathe in, and see if you can follow the breath as it comes in through your nostrils and kind of notice where you stop feeling it. So you breathe in, you might feel some clearness on your nostrils and just noticing as you breathe in where you stop noticing where the breath goes. And then whenever you're ready, breathe out. We'll do that for a few breaths. And for the next couple of breaths, just notice how the body's feeling. So we talked about um, neck and shoulders. We talked about balance. We talked about the connecting parts of the body. So feel into your body and see if there is a part that kind of calls out to you. Hopefully not screams, but you never know. And then setting your intention for how you want to feel after we're done. Once you set your intention, open up your eyes. And I want you to think about as we're going through practice today, continuing to breathe nice and easily as you are. So if you get to a place where you're like holding your breath or anything like that, I want you to pause and reconnect to the breath. And I know sometimes it's hard to do that when you're following me or something like that. So let's start with our hands either on the floor or on your legs. We're going to inhale, reach that breastbone forward. And I'll just turn it back in the morning. And you're going to pull on your legs or the floor and bring your chest forward as you inhale. And exhale around the upper back. So we're trying to isolate the rib cage a little bit as you're breathing. Inhale forward. And your head stays the same, right? So you're not dropping your head. You're trying to just move through your rib cage. So go ahead and make it. All right. Can you feel the movement in the rib cage a little bit yet? Why might we start here as we're working on the neck and shoulders and noticing what happens? And then we're going to pause. And I want you to, so now your body's upright, just little tiny circles. Tiny, see if you can make a little tiny circle. And so now as you're doing this, like feel your butt on the ground, feel the rib cage, feel your low back, kind of notice what's happening. Okay. And then again, if you, I don't think I said this, we're going to go the other direction. <laughs> on those brain cells. All right, and then we're going to pause for a moment. I want you to take your left hand in front, right hand in back. Yep, exactly. And you're going to keep your spine nice and long, chest to the right, and the head follows the chest, long, smooth breaths. And I want you to kind of press down with those fingertips so that your spine stays nice and long. Might be a little bit more challenging to breathe, but continue with that long, smooth breath. Nice big inhale, rise up, exhale, switch to the second side. And again, pressing down with the fingertips, chest to the left now. Long, smooth breaths. And again, pressing down as you inhale, exhale, come back to the center. And then let's keep the left hand down on the ground. And what I want you to do, we're going to inhale as we reach over and exhale, come back up. We're going to stay on the same side. Inhale over. And we're wanting to get into the rib cage as you're doing this. If it doesn't work having the arm extended, you can do it with your hand on your waist. 
right? Sometimes the weight of the arm can affect you. Now, this time when we come over, I want you to turn your palm up. We do this lots of times and press. So we were talking about connective stuff, right? So as you press, you connect to that connected tissue in a different way. And I don't know if you can feel it, but press and see what you can feel. I can certainly feel it because it's a lot more effort. Okay, and then palm down, come on up, second side. So again, inhale over and exhale back. more. And again, now we're going to stay over to the side, your butt's on the ground, you're going to turn that palm up and press. And breathe and press, breathe and press. And turn the palm up, down, and then come on up. Let's stretch out those legs a little bit. Now, we're going to work with the tennis balls for just a moment. And you might have noticed or not, I just got some new ones. So the basket is full. You want some fresh tennis balls, fresh used, freshly used tennis balls. <laughs> They're in there. Okay. So we're going to place in front of the sit bones, sit sit bones, and gently move front to back or side to side. You should be for some of the chair. I, I can't. You're trying, see? You might have to do one at a time because it might be slippery. Oh, okay. Or you might have to put a blanket underneath you so it doesn't like slide too so much. Now, one of the areas we talked about before we started was the outside of the hip, right? You have this area, it's tensor, tensor, tensor and fascia, right? And for some of us, it can get really challenging especially in poses like half moon where we're working the outside of the leg. So what we're going to do, and this one you can do against the wall, okay? You're going to come to the outside of your hip, and it might be really tender, so you're going to maybe have your elbow on a block, you're going to use your feet on the ground to lift you up. You're going to do the outside of the hip. So sometimes we do the center of the flute, but today I want to explore the outside of that hip and kind of know <laughs> when you come near it because it might be a little bit sensitive. Is everybody finding something? Even if you don't have the spot I'm talking about, <laughs> you found something. <laughs> All sorts of stuff going on there. Yeah. Well, and I think we'll do a little half moon and explore it a little bit later after we do some of the stretching. Now, the next part I want you to do, and, and you don't have to go all the way down, but we're gonna do the outside line of the thigh, right? So again, play, the, there's not necessarily a graceful way to get here, but you're doing the outside of your thigh. And <laughs> While well, crying is okay, it can't be because of the pain of the tennis ball. Physical therapy. <laughs> it's always interesting to see what's going on. Oh, you do too. How interesting. I never tried it. Too. I feel like I never can get like all the, the whole way. thing. Yeah, what a good idea. Yeah, so y'all see that? You could use two. Now, I know, I know we could stay here eh, a long time. We're going to do the second side. So whenever you're ready, again, starting at the outside of the hip. I think one day we should just be going around on the tennis ball for the whole class. Would you all leave me? <laughs> okay, and you're breathing. 
breathing and exploring. And you might notice a big difference from side to side or not. Something interesting over here. This is very grown today. That's okay. You can groan all you want. Now, again, whenever you're ready, if you're ready, you're going to make your way down the outside line of your thigh. I don't know if I've ever heard that word. Remember that one? <laughs> I know, interesting. Know <laughs> See me, you started something. <laughs> and I was physical therapist all the time. Because I, I never, never I had it. to like roll all the way down. The way. Yeah, that's great. After how many years? Like, <laughs> there's two balls. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. So, and I, if you're at home and you don't have tennis balls, you can actually massage this part of the body. All right, so we're gonna, I think we had enough. Take a couple deep, deep breaths, and some oxygen down there. And then we're going to come to the low back and, and be really gentle with yourself here. Don't force it. So one tennis ball on either side of your pelvis, and then you gently lean back into it with your knees side to side, front to back. Some of you will come down lower onto your elbows. Some of you will stay up like I am. And then the last thing I want to do with the tennis balls on the floor is going to be to lay down first onto your back with your knees bent. And then you're going to put the tennis balls on either side of your spine is going to stay off the actual vertebrae, right? My favorite spot is where the shoulder blades, you know, kind of where the shoulder blades end. But you're going to find a spot. We're going to stay here for a little bit. So again, you can move. You can move through your arms, you know, taking them up and down or out to the sides, like snow angels. You can also just stay in one spot and breathe. But you're trying to, to the best of your ability, loosen up the back body as well, specifically the upper back body. Right? You're breathing and noticing what's happening, not forcing anything. As I said, yeah, you can take the arms up and down, you can bring them out to the sides, maybe one arm at a time. And we're gonna take about 30 more seconds. And I know every single thing that we do with these tennis balls, we can do for a very long period of time. Now, When you're ready, we're going to carefully take out the tennis balls, roll over to the side. And this next part, so I wanted to do it on the knees. And I know that some, some of you might be challenged on your knees. So you could do this seated in a chair. So I'll show you. I'm putting the block in front just in case the head doesn't come down to the floor all the way, right? And the block could be at any level. And, and I'll show you in the chair after I model this one. So you're going to inhale up and exhale, both hands onto the back, forehead towards the ground. Okay, so that's kneeling in the chair. Mm -hmm. You would inhale up and exhale, hands to the back, come forward. Right? So you decide what works for you, being on the ground or in the chair.
Sometimes sitting in the chair, it's a little bit harder to get that forward bend in because it seems like there's less room. Now, next time you come up, we're going to pause there for a moment. And we're going to inhale. We're going to inhale one arm up with the head turns, and you're going to come down to the block. Inhale up. We're just staying on the one side. And the key here is to turn your head as you're coming down. One more. And we'll do the second side. And when you come up this time, relax that arm. Take a breath if you need to. <laughs> So, 
When you're ready, you're gonna bend that foot, bring it back, and we're gonna do the second side, stretch out the front legs. So you're switching legs. And again, flex the foot. <coughs> Inhale, body up. Exhale, towards the leg. Other option, of course, is Hoping to get to all the parts that were connected in the body. <laughs> about my brain. <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of the master of it all. Right? All right, so next time you come up, you're going to bend that front leg and we're going to come all the way up and then find a tennis ball and roll each of your feet for just a moment. We're almost all ready, like stretched and ready to start the thing. What do you think? I'm ready to try that. Have we been moving? I've been moving. Alright. Now we're going to do the second foot if you haven't done so already. And um, one of the things that we're going to do, so maybe you all want to go in and grab a chair at some point. I'm sure you have one. What do you see? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, I just want to know. It, it was a lady walking two dogs, but she looked like miniature ponies. <laughs> <laughs> were they well behaved? <laughs> Pardon? Were they about to behave? Oh, they were behaving. Okay, so when oh, you finish that. that second foot, you're going to roll the tennis ball off to the side so it's in a nice, safe place. And then I want you to I'm just gonna switch this. When you're ready, I want you to have your feet about hip width apart and feel your feet on the ground. And we're going to go heel to toe. Okay, you might want to stand up for this part. Noticing how you use your feet. And then, when you're ready, we're going to inhale both arms up, and you're going to decide how high your arms go up. So you might feel comfortable with shoulder height today, or overhead. And just let your breath and your body decide how high up your arms are going to go. We're going to go out to the sides. And again, start small and work your way up, maybe. And, you know, maybe you come to a place where the hands connect, maybe not. But it's not about momentum. And if it doesn't feel safe coming up onto your toes, it's okay to do this with your feet flat. One more. And then we're going to take one arm forward and one arm back, alternate sides. And try to keep your body and your face pointing forward as you're moving side to side. And again, some of you will start to take the hands overhead where they reach or not. Some exploration. And whenever you finish, that second side, we're gonna pause for a moment, roll through your shoulders, shake out your arms a little bit. How is everything doing? <laughs> exactly, make it into a little dance. I want you to make like an upside down scarecrow. And even just holding our arms like this can be a big deal. And you're gonna bring the hands up and down. Just notice how that feels in your shoulders, in your arms. And next time you're pointing up, we're going to come in and out. So inhale is open, exhale, squeeze together. I need you to be sitting on the chair. One more. And then when your elbows come together, I want you to press the fingers up. Breathe and focus. 
focus, it doesn't feel good, stop. And then pause and shake out your arms. All right, so we're gonna do some balance. So if you like a wall, or if you have the chair, you can have the chair right next to you and use that as your wall. I just want you to make sure your legs, the legs of the chair are on your mat so that it doesn't take off on you. So what we're gonna do, you're gonna find your breath. You're gonna take your weight into the left foot, lift the right knee up, roll through the ankle, a couple times in each direction. And we're gonna take back foot down, and your hands are wherever it helps you. I like my hands out to the sides. So the weight in the right foot, left knee up, roll through the ankle, in each direction. Now again, we're going to bring that right knee up, take the opposite hand, and bring that knee across the body. Right? Noticing what part of your body you're feeling as you move it one more time, and then second side. Can't turn my back to <laughs> Okay, so other knee across the body. You all can turn your back to me. to stretch the quad a little bit here in the front of the hip flexor. All right, and then gently releasing that foot to the ground. And I want to try something. Let's see how it goes. So you have the seat of the chair facing you. And you're gonna place one foot on the chair. And your knee is over your ankle and you're gonna walk back foot back. Okay. And you want to be safe. That's key here, right? When you're finding a place that's comfortable for you, you're breathing. Okay, yeah, and you're making sure your chair is totally on the mat. And then you're going to straighten that leg. I realize that it might be a challenge to keep your hands on the chair and you can't really use blocks here, so you can't hold on to the wall. Maybe be in team, put your hands on your hips. <laughs> All right, next time you come forward, you're gonna take that foot off and switch sides. Woo! So again, you can place your foot on the chair, knee over the ankle. Walk that so your back leg back a little bit so you find a comfortable place. So we're trying to access those same parts we did on the floor and on the chair, but in a different way, right? So again, when and if you're ready, you can start to bend and straighten that front leg. So your back leg just shifts You're still breathing. So when you come forward, we are going to come on up, interlace your fingers, roll through your wrists a couple times in each direction. Now we're going to do half moon on the chair, but if you prefer to do it on the floor with block, like that's part of your practice, you're welcome to do it that way. 
So the way that we're gonna do this, you're gonna face your chair on the seat and you're gonna keep your right hand and your right foot on the chair and step back with the left foot. Okay. Then we're gonna lift up that back leg and we're gonna hold, keep your right hand on the chair. It might be on the back or the seat. And you're gonna start to open up the hips and the shoulders. Right? And it's okay if your standing leg bends a little bit. And then you might even take your left arm, reach it up towards the sky, and your head, you're finding, woo, finding a comfortable spot for your head. Breathe and focus. Now we're going to bend that back knee and reach for your ankle. Okay, keep breathing. So you're holding, possibly, you might use a strap here or your hand, you're holding the left ankle with the left hand. And then we're gonna carefully release, extend, turn your hips and your chest towards the floor, step back into a little lunge, and step that back foot forward. And then we're gonna do the second side. So now, any questions about that? Does that feel okay? It's a little bit different with the chair. So again, now that we're here, you're gonna step back with the left foot. You're gonna keep the left foot, you're gonna step back with the right foot, right? And so now, left hand, left foot, stay on the ground. Lift up the right leg, open up the hips and the shoulders, and then possibly extend your right arm, always safety first, keep breathing, and then possibly you're going to bend that back knee and hold on to it with your hand or explore the possibility. Keep breathing. When you feel complete, Extend, toes towards the ground, bend that front knee, step back. And then we're going to take a little seat on our chair so you might flip it around so you can see me. What do you think? Pretty good? So now I want you to, you're on your folding chair, right? And there's most folding chairs, there's this little ridge. I want you to walk your sits bone right to that place so you can kind of feel them on the edge. You're gonna take a couple of breaths. Can you feel them on the edge? And just connect with your breath. All right, so, and we've done this in lots of different ways. You're gonna start with your vision on your left hand. Inhale up, follow the hand with your eyes. To center, alternating sides. Inhale is up, exhale back. And you're only going as far as you can still see your fingers. Right, so you're tracking your hand with your eyes as you're breathing, as you're moving. When you finish that second side, you're going to pause in the center and you're going to stretch your legs out. If you hyperextend, you might keep a little bend here. And then again, you're still towards the edge of your chair. Inhale, body up, exhale, body forward. When you come up this time, we're going to bend the knees and take the feet wide on the chair. So you're grounded on the chair. And just like we did at the very beginning, you're going to use your hands on your knees. I'm just going to turn so you can see. 
Inhale, you're gonna bring your sternum forward. Exhale, you're gonna round. So you're not bringing your head up and down. We're really trying to isolate this part of the body, which sometimes, because they are all connected, <laughs> it seems like that's not a possibility. Which brings me to my favorite definition of yoga, which is being able to attain seeming right as you're moving the path towards that okay so we're going to come to a place where we pause for a moment we're going to come down to the ground now and does anything want to do oh no i think we're good you're going to come down to the ground and you're going to if you like have a blanket under your butt and you're going to have a block under the chair so this is our setup. You're facing the seat of the chair. You have a block just below it. And then we're gonna take our legs and you have both knees pointing forward. Your bottom foot is gonna come up on the outside of your top ankle. And some of you, your feet might not work like that, so they can find it. Yeah, you got it. Okay, and then you might have to move your chair a little bit. We're gonna come down onto the elbow and you're gonna hold that front leg of the chair with your arm. And my shoulder is gently resting on the seat of the chair. And you're gonna reach up towards the back of the chair. Your hand may or may not come to the chair. Keep breathing. Some of you may prefer to move, and some of you may prefer to hold. So kind of explore and see what feels better in your body. All right, now, next time your arm comes down, you're gonna flip your body up, switch yourself around. You just have to flip your body. I'm going to move my chair. And again, same thing. Uh, your elbow is on the block. You're holding on to the front leg of the chair. Your legs are stacked up. And again, shoulder gently resting on the seat of the chair. And you're either holding, but of course, if you're holding, you're still moving your breath, right? Or you're moving with your breath. And again, one more. And we're going to pause. And then we're going to turn sit yourself up, you're going to turn your back body towards the chair, and notice where your shoulder blades come to the back of the chair, and some of you might like a little blanket on the chair, it's cold or uncomfortable. So here, we're going to use the seat of the chair as a little prop to kind of press into our shoulder blades, so that we can open up our chest a little bit more without forcing, of course. And then you decide what's going on with your head. I don't want you to just drop your head back. That doesn't feel good in my body. Um, and you can bring your head back if you are in total control and <laughs> it's your muscles supporting you. You're not just flopping your head back and giving in. So this is would be considered like a supported back bend in case you're wondering what on earth am I doing? Okay. And then very carefully you're going to bring your body up, take your hands onto your legs, inhale body up, exhale slide forward. Do that a couple of times. And I want you to play, play, play. Close attention to how that part that we were just stretching feels as you're moving front to back. Well, I, I, I remember my spine and toe and sat all straight. 
So we said that again. I was in my lumbar spine, and then I sat up straighter. Then I was in my grass. That cringed. Uh, and I'm glad you noticed that. So from here, we're going to move those chairs out of the way. But you may want to use it uh, a little bit for um, Shavasana. So, and you might be sitting on a blanket or you might be flat on the ground. You're going to open up the legs a little bit. And then without using your hands, bring in your left foot. If your knee is way up in the air, you're going to put a block underneath it. And you might use a strap here, you might use your hands. What we're going to do, so you're going to turn your body towards the straight leg. Your foot is flexed, right? So that's, this is our foundation here. You're going to slide down, hold on to wherever you can come to and bring your shoulders back. So you are facing your toes. You're holding on to your leg wherever it's comfortable, bringing your shoulders back. And now I want you to connect to your diaphragm, right? So diaphragm right below your rib cage, right? Close your eyes if that helps you go inside. Now as you breathe in, right, your diaphragm expands. As you breathe out, it contracts. I want you to connect to that to the best of your ability. Bless you. Ever I give directions and you have no idea what I'm talking about, please ask. All right. Now, next time you exhale, I want you to invite your diaphragm in and up. So nice big inhale, diaphragm expands, exhale, diaphragm contracts. After the exhale, in and up with your diaphragm. And you just pause for a moment, then inhale. that one more time and it looks like nothing but like I can feel my temperature change. All right and then we're going to release. Come on up. We're going to bring that straight leg forward and reach for your flexed foot in the knee and gently rock from side to side. So when you do this does that reach that place that you were talking about? Um Maybe, but I'll know on the other side. Okay. Sure. okay, so we're going to take this foot and you're either going to place it inside or outside your thigh. Whatever leg is bent, that hand is behind you. I think we're all on the same side. Reach up with your straight leg arm. Inhale here. Exhale as you bring that belly towards the inner thigh. Some of you will take the elbow to the outside. Some of you will hold on your arm, finding that comfortable place, long, smooth breaths. This is actually one of my favorites for stretching the shoulders. So notice what you feel happening in your shoulders as you're here. You might be like, I don't feel it in my shoulders. Okay, we're going to inhale up, exhale, come forward. Straighten out the legs, open them up a little bit, and then we're going to bring in your right foot. And again, you're going to turn your body towards straight leg, flex that foot, inhale up, exhale, find a place to hold on, pull your shoulders back. And at first, you're just noticing your diaphragm moving as you breathe. Breathe and breathe and breathe. And then you're going to inhale, let the diaphragm expand. Exhale as the diaphragm contracts. And then you're going to pull in and up on that diaphragm after you exhale completely. Pause for a moment. Inhale, fill up. Exhale, contract. After the exhale, in and up with the diaphragm. And do it one more time. Inhale, slide on up. We're going to bring that leg to the center. And again, find that flexed foot. Rock it side to side. And then it 
again, you're going to either place the foot on the inside of the thigh or over the thigh. Bent knee hand behind you, press down so your body gets nice and long. Inhale that arm up. Exhale as you bring the belly towards the inner thigh, hand holding onto the knee, your elbow to the outside. Long, smooth breaths. And notice if it's more work to breathe in this position, if the breath flows smoothly. Exhale forward, stretch out both the legs, inhale body up, exhale down. Just do that a couple of times. And then we're all going to meet on our bellies. So if you feel like your bones poke into the ground, open the blanket underneath your full body length. Don't just put it under the pelvis. We're going to come down onto the belly. All right, so we're on our belly, your face is towards the ground, elbows are next to the chest. And inhale, we're going to lift the upper body up. We're not using the arms. Exhale back to the ground. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, face towards the floor. Now, next time you come up, you're going to walk your elbows forward a little bit, so sphinx pose. So your forearms are on the ground, and I want you to gently pull your forearms towards your body so that you can bring your chest, your breastbone forward. Not too much. Then we're going to look over each shoulder. Center, exhale as you look. And next time you finish that second side, when you come to the center, you're going to bend both knees and flex your feet. Gently take your feet side to side. Oops, there's the way. Now, next time you're are in the center. We're going to pause for a moment. Put your forehead on your arms and just relax your feet. And then on an inhale, we're going to make our way up onto the elbows again. And your feet are up. So this is like a modification of bow pose. Right? So you're on your elbows. Forearms and elbows coming towards your body, chest coming forward, feet are flexed, and reaching towards your head. Not that they're going to reach there. That's your elastigirl. Still breathing. And then, when you feel ready, you're going to relax the legs, come down onto the ground, roll over onto your back. bring the knees into the chest. And you can just hug your knees, you can make nice little circles, whatever feels good and helps you to relax your low back, back the pelvis floor. Now this is the time that I want you to ask yourself, does your body need anything else before we make our way into Shavasana. And, and if so, you're going to do that. <clears throat> Since we have the chairs here today, one of my favorite things, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you as an option. Could <clears throat> one of my old teachers, Jim Otto, just calls it Snip Alley. But placing your lower legs on the chair because it takes some of the weight pressure off of the low back. And you can try this. You don't have to try it. Um, and, but I want you to find a comfortable position to be in for Shavasana. Find a comfortable 
comfortable position. And then as you're ready, and if you try it and you don't like it, feel free to make any adjustments. So get yourself comfortable. Start to focus on your breath. Long, smooth breaths. And as you're breathing in today, if you choose, you might invite in this beautiful golden light that comes in through your nostrils. And as you're breathing that light in, it starts to fill the middle of your head. So with each inhale, Golden light filling your head. Now, as that light starts to build in your head, as you exhale, invite the light to start to move down into the rest of your body. Still breathing in golden light. It's building in your head. As you exhale, that light starts to flow to all the other cells in your body. Light can have any property that you choose. So it could be a healing light, it could be a warm light. And as you move to a quieter place, imagining that you are just this orb of golden light. Thank <laughs> you. 
first chapter in the Yoga Sutra, and what it says is, as or when I focus on the light, I become a light. Light can have any of those meanings that that are possible with light: knowledge, wisdom, life force, healing. So as you start to reawaken, decide if you want to just let that light dissipate if you were working with it, if you want to carry it around with you, and know that you can always call on it. After, after you do, it's kind of like um, an activation when you do something like that. Once it's in your body, it's with you. You can pull it out at any time, and my experience is the more we work with it, so when you're ready, you start to gently awaken. And eventually, you'll come up to a comfortable seated position. Once you're in that comfortable seated position, I just want you to inhale, head at neutral, exhale, chin towards the chest. So isolating the head and neck as you try not to move your shoulders as you move the head forward. And next time your head is at neutral, we're going to turn, and you're trying not to lift or drop your chin, you're just keeping your head at neutral turning it with your breath. Next time you come through the center, we're going to inhale, head up, exhale, chin towards the chest, and bring the ear, so it's at a, a diagonal, towards the shoulder. But you're not just dropping your head to the side, right? The chin is tilted down, and then the ear comes over. You'll roll through the center, and then do the second side. Through the center and lift that head up. Hopefully, everybody's feeling okay. If you need to do anything else, please feel free to do that after the practice. And I want to thank you all and all of my teachers, past and present, for knowledge that lands that we did. And let's do our um, planetary points. So, inhaling the arms up towards the sky, exhaling the sound through to the heart. No. Oh. 